Hi, Duncan. Thank you so much for joining this podcast episode. Really appreciate it. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, uh, you know, beating the opportunities off with a stick. It's an exciting time of year. Yeah, pleasure is mine. I'm super excited to have a conversation with you and talk about unusual topic, which is like uh, alcohol and how we can have alcohol free living, which is like important to keep us healthy and everything because everything there is a limit. And when you go off the limit, then we become like an addict to anything. So that's going to be our topic. And before that, I'd love to know more about yourself, your expertise into like helping other people for recovering from alcoholic and like uh, for their journey. So can you share like how you got started with your coaching business? Yeah, so I've kind of always been involved in communication, writing, training, coaching, that sort of thing. And I, I got to a point in my life where I realized all I was doing for people was helping them to replicate success that I'd had in the past. And I sort of sat down and thought about it for a while. And I was like, well, what's the biggest success I've had in the past? I mean, apart from, you know, persuading this beautiful lady to marry me and starting a family, you know, <laughs> apart from that, yeah. the biggest success I have had has been to stop drinking. You know, the biggest impact on my life of anything I have ever done has by far been stopping drinking. So why am I not coaching and training and speaking and writing about that? So that's, you know, that, that's how I, I sort of got into the passion. And now, you know, I I, I love it. I wouldn't do anything different. I uh, I jump out of bed every morning. <laughs> Yeah, and and not many people are doing that. Not many people are like helping, like someone is go through the process. Not many people are talking about that because we don't see it as a problem, uh, unless like in the drug addiction. Drug addiction, like we talk about often, because of uh, you can see visibly like uh, how how they are acting and reacting. But with the alcohol, unless like you are like a proper addict, like uh, those who's like having a gallons of every day and just like being uh, on the sofa and not doing anything then that's the problem but before that a lot of people have a certain thing like they not that kind of alcoholic but they're running their business and everything else but they get monday brain fog they don't know like what to think they don't know like how choose they're going by like uh, they're scouting and they're not making like right decision for their business so most of my listeners they are like a small to medium sized business owners probably some of them like they have that problem and they don't realize it they're thinking like they're not alcoholic unless you're quote unquote like a proper gang support or like a proper like alcoholic so those who like a kind of like no 100 percent they're 50 60 percent in there like they drink so much on a weekend and whole week goes by to recover from it by the time they get recovered they weekend comes in again and they go through the vicious circle again and over and over so how how do someone can recognize the pattern of like they are alcoholic not like necessarily like you are extreme one yeah, I mean, I think you've you've highlighted the big problem that we have in society. We sort of think, well, you know, people who have a problem, they're sticking vodka on their cornflakes. They don't have a job. They don't have a family. They've lost their driving license. You know, yeah, that's what we think problem drinking looks like. Mm. And yes, if you tick all of those boxes, you most definitely have a problem. Yeah. But that is a small amount of the people in the world. Yeah. And we kind of think, you know, we say to ourselves, well, I'm not like that. Therefore, I don't have a problem. And I, th I think we need a much more nuanced understanding to what drinking actually is. It's not just those people who are putting vodka on their cornflakes who, are, uh, who have a problem, you know, and everybody else is all right. There are stages, you know, there is drinking, which is of relatively low risk. There is drinking, which is a moderate risk. There is drinking, which is a severe risk. And there is drinking, which is a heavy risk. Now, if you look at where I was, I was drinking, uh, you know, a, a bottle and a half, two bottles of wine every night. If you look at where I was and where I am now, most people think moderation is probably in between that, you mm. know, in between problem drinking and not drinking at all is moderation. But if you go halfway between where I was and where I am now, you're still going to be drinking something like a bottle of wine a day. That's still problem drinking. If you even go 75% away from where I was to where I am now, you're still going to be drinking something around 30 units a week, which is actually really easy to do. It could be, um, you know, two drinks three or four times a week, 
or three or four drinks two times a week, that's going to get you pretty close to 30 units a week. And that is going to have an effect on you. It's going to affect your sleep. So you're going to wake up, you're going to feel tired. It's going to affect your cortisol levels. So, um, you know, just that kind of like one or two big glasses of wine is going to raise your cortisol levels somewhere between 10 and 20 percent, which, of course, I'm sure your listeners know, you know, cortisol is the stress hormone. So if you're drinking to stop uh, your stress, you're going (laughs) to you're going to wake up with a lot more in the morning. But you're also affecting another neurotransmitter called GABA, which is to do with anxiety. It's to do with feeling nervous and feeling insecure. You're going to get a little boost of that when you start drinking. But when you wake up in the morning, it's going to be a lot lower. So you're going to get out of bed. You won't feel hungover, but you Mm. will feel more stressed. You will feel more anxious and you will feel tireder. And, you know, there are enough difficulties running your own business, aren't there? There are enough problems we do not need to add them to ourselves yeah totally so obviously the stress is already high because you're running a business the business is like a most it's like you're running a going for like a war right like every morning you wake up with piles of like a stress comes in so the piles of problem you have to deal with that top of that if you already have cortisol level is so high then obviously you're gonna get really really stressed out that's gonna give you a lot of physical symptoms like extreme tiredness like a brain fog like could be like feeling dizzy, could be feeling like a headache. Uh, a lot of things comes with like a high cortisol level. And I, I never uh, drunk in my life, never tasted it because it's forbidden in my religion. But I have yeah. a like high level of cortisol because of I have other illnesses, which is ulcerative colitis. So it increased my all stress level and also like the medicine I was on that actually induced a lot of cortisol level. It's like over a year now, still I'm um, struggling to reduce that. It's taking a significant amount of time, especially during the winter time. It's getting really, really high because of lack of sun and everything like the weather itself in general, like increases your cortisol level so as a business owners like like we talked about like there is always a uh, high stress high everything and there is a chance for you to like uh, most of us like don't have the time for like going for an exercise or things like that not many people are active even though we know we should be doing that not many people are busy and they couldn't figure out their time management and so obviously you creating a chance of like a heart disease, lung disease and things like that. There is so many other health issues can come. So I like to know like more about the solution. So we know like everyone should know like what's the problem is there, like what can cause it, like if you do anything too much. But most importantly, how they can, um, we talked about how you can uh, recognize it. And then after that, like you need to take an action. So how you can uh, take action. So obviously you're expert on that. You're helping other people. So if someone is, comes to you, let's say, Duncan, I need your help. Like uh, I probably like a s- social drinker, but here and there I drink too much. My weekend, it just goes on like, uh, I don't know. I can't remember anything about that. What happened to the weekend? And now I need to help. So uh, how would you help them? Yeah, funnily enough, I, I, I more and more people I work with, uh, you know, they 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 definitely wouldn't be recognized as really really heavy drinkers they might mm-hmm. be having a couple of glasses with dinner in the uh in the week maybe a bit more on the weekend or they might just be drinking on the weekend they're just drinking heavily on the weekend and they're starting to realize that they just don't enjoy it so they come and see me and what we do is we start to get to grips with your beliefs that in, in my opinion it all starts with uh, beliefs. And that's not really what I believe. That's what the research shows. So there is a very strong correlation between what you believe alcohol provides you with and the amount that you drink. So we start by getting to grips with your beliefs. You know, most people believe it helps you to socialize. Most people believe it helps you to relax. Most people believe that, you know, you can't celebrate without it. And I like I mean, obviously, we've never been out to party, but I imagine you have fun and you celebrate and you've never drunk alcohol. And that is such a fantastic example to people that it it clearly is possible to have fun and enjoy yourself without alcohol, isn't it? You're living proof of that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we get to grips with all of those beliefs. So obviously there is so many enjoy like this is the end of the day is a drink and there's so many drinks out there, non-alcoholic, and which can be like great for you. Even though with my cases, I don't enjoy any kind of drink right now except for water because for my health issues i cannot have any fizzy drinks or like added sweetener and all that in general like if you talk about general without like alcohol you should be must be avoiding like all kind of like uh, consuming like a normal soda coke or things like that there's so much content of sugar as an entrepreneur if you want to keep yourself uh 
healthy like that's why you see like all of them bodybuilders and everything they don't drink any of them kind of uh, like a soft soda or like a drink yeah i mean i think you know if if the choice is between drinking a couple of glasses of coke on a night out or yeah. eight pints of beer it's everyone's take, choice. Yeah. take the coke every time yeah but I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I mostly drink water or um, tea, which isn't really tea, or coffee, which really is a bit too strong. And I should probably do something about that. Anyway, so, um, you know, like you, you get to grips with the, the beliefs. And and what, what I found is that once people change their beliefs, once they start to realise that you can enjoy yourself, you can mm. relax, you can have fun without alcohol, then, uh, you know, that desire to drink, it sort of falls away. It just goes, uh, goes down the drain as it were and then we do a little bit of work around thought management we give people some tricks tips techniques to kind of help them in social situations and to help them when people ask the question but in general once you got rid of the beliefs sorted out the thoughts then the actions follow the problem that most people make is they try and do it the other way around. Yeah. they try and stop the action they hope the thoughts will catch up they hope the beliefs will catch up but they tend not to. So they end up going back to whatever it was, whether it's poor diet mm. or whether it's drinking or whether it's not exercising or whether it's just spending your entire time on Facebook. Yeah, totally. And the most importantly is just, it always happens on a social circle. Like if they meet their friends, probably in the pub or like in a restaurant and where is like alcohol is being served. And obviously if you're around with it and you already experienced that, if you're enjoying already alcohol, it's really hard to avoid that kind of a situation, isn't it? So how do someone can control like themselves? Like probably you can have like here and there a small amount and you should know your limit. Those people, like sometimes, like they go with the flow, with the conversation, and everything, and they taking it on, like without realizing how much they're taking it on. And then obviously, he just drank too much. So how do you have like a self conscious on this? Like, a, if this is going to be too much, like a one glass or two glass, I'm just having for the night out. That's totally acceptable. But if I'm going too much, like, how do I stop with that? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't drink, and I don't drink for the simple reason that I just think it's simpler. Yeah. You know, if you if you try to moderate your drinking, then every time you go to a social event or anywhere that alcohol is being um, served, or even just Friday night, because it's uh. Friday night and you always used to drink on Friday night, you have, end up having to have this conversation with yourself. You know, what am I going to drink? How much am I going to drink? Am I going to leave when I stop? What do I tell people if I'm not drinking? All of that. So for me, it's much easier to just to say, no, I don't do it. I, I don't drink. It's sort of like, you know, Steve Jobs always used to wear New Balance trainers, blue jeans and a black um, roll neck jumper. And he used to wear that the whole time because he didn't want to have to decide what to wear in the morning. He wanted to yeah. get up put on his clothes and then use that decision-making ability, use that willpower, use that strength to design cool tech. You know, he didn't want to waste it on what, what, he was going to wear that day and for me it's the same I, I don't want to waste my energy on working out whether to drink or not mm. but for some people you know they that that is a, a um something that they want to pursue they think the juice is worth the squeeze and there are a lot of great ways of moderating out there you know there's mindfulness which is sort of being more aware of what you're drinking uh which I think that can really help. It really works for some people because a lot of what we do, not simply around alcohol, but around food, around social media, we do it yeah. without really being aware we're doing it. So it just becomes automatic. And mindfulness can be a really good way of making yourself more aware of it. Or so you can uh, use bright lines, which are very clear um, lines in the sand kind of thing, lines that you don't cross. So some people will only drink on a particular day. Some people will only drink a particular amount. So I know uh, some people will, they will buy a bottle of wine and they will share that with their partner. And that is all they will drink in, in the week. And it's very easy yeah. <laughs> because, you know, once you finish that bottle of wine, there is no more. You've, you've got to then kind of like make quite a lot of decisions to open the next one. Um, so it, it sort of gives them that clarity or, 
uh, Chris Bailey, who's written an, a, a couple of really excellent books that I like a lot about um, productivity and focus, um, he sort of combines the two methods. So he only drinks on special occasions when he's doing something that's nice, and he only drinks something that's novel. So mm. he doesn't just go and drink the same thing every time. He will... Um, you know, actually look at the menu and actually see what they're serving and try and drink something or try something that he's never had before. So that combines this idea that you only drink in certain circumstances, but also brings in that kind of awareness and mindfulness. And, uh, you know, in uh, he believes it enhances his joy. So I, I would caution, though, around moderation. There are a lot of people on the Internet who want to sell you the idea of moderation but they are just trying to sell you what you want to hear. Yeah. It can be very, very difficult to moderate your drinking, particularly if you come from the point of view of drinking very heavily. At the very least, you need to do at least uh, four weeks without drinking at all before you start it. And I would absolutely definitely advise you to get some help and support with that. Get a coach mm. who can help you through that, hold you accountable and make sure that you actually are sticking to your resolutions yeah. because otherwise that slope gets pretty slippery pretty quick yeah it's really hard to do it on your own especially like uh, at the beginning of it like obviously you're always going to go back to like where you are probably to start to uh, do it for a few days few weeks and then you and us uh, say the same thing like i i know like you talked about a lot uh mindfulness and how how you do it that so what what do you do for your mindfulness? Like, what was your kind of routine? Do you do you follow something? Yeah, so I, funnily enough, I have an SOP for my life, a standard operating procedure for my life. I used to work in the NHS, and we used to have these uh, standard operating procedures for everything. Mm -hmm. And just like one afternoon, I was reading one, and it was very, very boring. And I think my mind sort of drifted a little bit. And I thought, I, do you know, I, what I do I don't do the same thing every day by any stretch of the imagination. It's not like it's not like we're going to do this tomorrow, is it? Um, but there's a lot of similarities in my day. So I thought, that's it. I'm going to write it down and I'm going to be quite clear about what I would like my morning routine, uh, you know, how I structure my day, those kind of things. So, um, yeah, my morning routine is really, really important. I try to achieve what I call the iron cereal bowl. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, means I have to get out of bed without pressing snooze on my alarm clock. I have to do my exercise routine. I have to do a minute of cold in the shower. I have to plan my day and I have to hug both my wife and my daughter. Um, so that, that's that's what I try and do in the morning. Um, I, I always try and write first. I am a writer first and foremost. So I always try and spend the, the best two hours of the day, which for me is after dropping my daughter off at school till about 11. I try and spend that writing. Uh, I'm very disciplined with my diet. I'm about 95% whole food plant-based. Uh, I always try to do, um, I nick this off Robin Sharma, but I think it's, it's a great phrase. The 60 minute student, yeah. you're not allowed to go to bed unless you've done 60 minutes of studying every day. So I try to read a lot, listen to podcasts, that sort of thing. And then my nights. Those two things. So yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm all about the routines. And I do always wear the same clothes. Like if you've ever seen me on a podcast, this is what I will be wearing. That's great. Yeah, you have to have like a balance in your life and you need to know like who you are as a person. That that makes it so much simpler. And like uh, the less decision you're going to make, the less uh, you have to worry about the things and you can focus on the main thing about like what you love to do, contribute to the world. And that makes it so much easier. And with me as well, like... Uh, I, I hate to like do my hair all the time and I pray five times. So obviously you have to uh, wash your hair all the time. So if I'm wearing some kind of hair product, it's going to get messy anyway. So I got rid of all of my hairs, wear a cup. It's easier. Like I show up every time and where I need to be. It makes it so much simpler with the color as well. Like I wear like two, three different colors and my color is, is set up as well, what I normally wear. And yeah, just keeping it simple, like what I eat, I like to eat the chicken and rice every single day. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite food. It makes it so much easier for me and uh, focusing on that. So yeah, I mean, Roy, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Roy Baumeister wrote a fantastic book called Willpower, which is exactly about that subject. And he's done an awful lot of, you know, proper science-y experiments and things like that, um, uh, just to, to show that you can wear out people's ability to make a decision. Yeah. And if you do that, um, you know, you, you kind of, you, you can then start to see it as this limited resource that you've got. And if it's a limited resource, you know, you've got to guard it and you've got to use it for the things that are important in life. Mm. I, like business people, we have to make decisions. We're constantly making decisions. So let's make the decisions that matter as best we can and not worry about whether we're going to be drinking this evening, what we're having for lunch, uh, you know, or what we're wearing uh, or, or what we're going to do with our hair. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So thank you so much, Ankan. We're nearly end of this podcast. So those who's listening, if anyone wants to learn more about yourself, your business, where is the best place to find you? So if your our listeners put getover.uk into the internet, it will take them to a little bit of my website. And there they can download uh, one of my books. It's called Get Over Indulgence. They can download a PDF or a Kindle of that, or they can listen to it on the audio book. If they can stand to listen to me doing silly voices. They can uh, do the audio book. That's entirely free. Um, but that also takes you to um, my website. There's a whole ton of resources on there. Um, yeah. And I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook. We do quite a lot of uh, a lot of stuff there. So you can you can find me on those platforms. If you can spell Baskaram Brown, I am super easy to find. If you can't just type get a, uh, no type real men quit into the internet that's the name of my most uh, recent book and uh i should that should bring me up as well that's great thank you so much for your time today and i wish you best of luck with your business your personal life you have a wonderful year ahead and thank you so much for coming to the show today oh, thanks man i've enjoyed it you're most welcome it's a pleasure to have you in the show so that's a wrap guys thank you for listening to this podcast episode today with mr duncan i hope you enjoyed our conversation if anyone wants to learn more about him you can visit his website or you can find him on social media platforms so until then, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Take care.